right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. So uh, yeah, welcome everybody to uh, today's webinar. Thank you for those of you that are attending live and for those of you that are watching back on the recording, uh, glad you could make it. Um, so today's webinar is uh, getting us ready for our code season. So it's uh, coming up very soon, the beginning of December. Uh, so excited to introduce um, you know, Code HS, what we have to offer in terms of Hour of Code, and yeah, what it's all about and how we can really get students excited um, with uh, programming. So yeah, let's jump right in here. So my name is TJ Devane. I'm a professional development specialist here at Code HS. Um, before uh, Code HS, I was a high school math and computer science teacher. Um, so I taught a lot of different computer science courses, uh, helped run a um, school-wide Hour of Code initiative for a few years at one of the schools I taught at. And it was such an exciting opportunity, um, you know, getting students interested in programming that had never written a line of code before. And just being able to see that, um, you know, those light bulb moments and see students be able, uh, you know, for them to recognize that they they can program um, and just how easy it, it can be to get started and so it's it's a it's a very exciting time of the year and so um, yeah looking forward to jumping into this webinar on the back end today uh, i have uh, one of my teammates christopher he's going to be answering any questions that you may have in chat and also throw in some links in there um, so he did just provide you with the slides for today so thank you for throwing that in there christopher uh, so yeah, we'll keep it rolling and jump right in. So our agenda today, we're going to cover a few main things. So really, like, if this is your first time um, running an hour of code, you know, what is it? So let's talk about hour of code. We'll, we'll get into just a, a slight bit of the history there. Um, and then choosing the right hour of code activity. What is the right activity that makes sense for your students? Have your students programmed before? Have they never written a line of code? We have a lot of different options and we'll provide you with those resources resources and share um, you know some recommendations that we have and then after that yeah we'll talk we'll really get into like okay now that we uh know which activity we're going to choose how do we actually implement that in our classroom and i'll walk you through all of that today as well and then uh yeah after our code you know, there are other ways that you can engage students in programming. And so I have a, a few different outlets that I want to share with you. And even though the, the Q&A is listed there at the bottom, you know, if you have if you have any questions, feel free to just throw those into chat. Um, you know, we're more than happy to help answer that as we go um, or a QA, and a uh, and Christopher will be able to uh, assist too. All right, so yeah, the probably the, the best way to ask questions is using the Q&A feature in Zoom. So if you're not familiar with that feature, it should be down um, down there in the bottom of your screen. Uh, it's a great way to um, you know ask questions and get a response. So uh, yeah, feel free to throw your questions in there. And I'll pause periodically and ask Christopher if there's anything that um, should be addressed to the, the whole group as well. All right, so if you are not too familiar with Code HS, just wanna uh, talk about who we are um, as a company. And yeah, so Code HS, we um, are a comprehensive platform for teaching computer science. Um, we offer curriculum, free curriculum from elementary school all the way through high school. So we provide um, K through 12 web-based computer science curriculum. So that means that you do not need to download any additional software. All you need is a web browser, access to the internet and an account, um, and you have access to our curriculum. We also offer online and offline professional development. So you are experiencing one of our free online professional developments right now. Um, and yeah, just a full comprehensive software platform, uh, not only with curriculum, but with teacher tools, a full LMS integrated into that.
All right. If you don't have a account yet on CodeHS, super easy to get signed up for one. Just head to CodeHS.com slash sign up, and you're going to just fill out a, a quick form about yourself as a teacher. And um, then you will have your teacher account and uh, be able to start uh, viewing our curriculum and um, adding students into your courses and sections and um, specifically our code activities that we're going to talk about today. So you can do that right now, or if you want to wait and do that after, completely fine. All right, so what is an hour of code? So um, this could be new to you. Uh, maybe you haven't done one in a while. So I do want to talk about uh, what an hour of code actually is. So it's a nationwide initiative to introduce um, all of our students to one hour of computer science. And uh, really the goal is for students to one, have fun, um, get excited about computer science and really encourage them after that one hour to sign up for computer science courses um, and get excited about learning more about computer science and really just encouraging them that uh, how easy it is to get started with computer science. And so that's, that's really what the whole initiative is about. So the Hour of Code, um, or you'll see this abbreviated, the CS Ed Week. So again, the goal, exposure, um, exposing more K through 12 students to computer science with just an hour of programming tutorials uh, to help increase access and equity during CS Ed Week, which is always um, the beginning of December this week, uh, for, or this year, it'll be the week of December 9th through the 15th. Um, and then fun little fact here, why is it held in December in recognition of Grace Hopper's birthday, which is on December 9th. So who is Grace Hopper, if you're not familiar? So Grace Hopper is one of the pioneering computer scientists um, and was the US Navy Rear Admiral. A couple key contributions helped with the development of COBOL, one of the first programming languages. Fun little fact, um, Grace Hopper credited with the term debugging after removing an actual moth from a computer, kind of gross, but also very cool fun fact there. And yeah, her legacy, just her work inspires people, uh, especially girls to pursue technology and science. So fun little thing to share with your students if they are unfamiliar um, about Hour of Code and CS Ed Week. So um, you have access to these slides, great little uh, contribution to add into your Hour of Code Week. Okay, so we have an idea of what Hour of Code is. So let's talk about how we can select an Hour of Code. Um, so on CodeHS, we offer a lot of different Hour of Code activities. And Christopher just put this into the chat, codehs.com slash HOC. Um, and this is where I'll go there in just a moment where um, we are able to see all of the Hour Code tutorials that we have available. Um, so you can see just a few of them uh, up here on the right. So uh, various ones where we are programming with Carol Adog and students are learning about JavaScript to React Native mobile apps, uh, web design, um, math specific ones, coding in sports, students learning about block blockchain technology, generating art with code. So there's a lot of different options. And so if this is your first time doing it, it can be a little overwhelming on uh, which activity to actually choose. And so in a moment, we'll talk about um, how to guide you towards the right activity for your students. I'm going to take a pause right now. Christopher, is there anything um, in the chat or Q&A that uh, we want to talk about? Uh, we had one participant raise their hand at the beginning, um, but I'm not sure that was on purpose. Uh, that's been quiet since then. OK. All right, I'm seeing a question come into the chat. Um, yeah, we do um, have stuff for students that have a background in Java, and that actually will uh, bring me to our next point here. So uh, this document, which Christopher will share into the chat, and I will <clears throat> open this up as well. 
So this document um, is great reference. So for answering that question, um, students that have background in Java, where do we kind of, how do we select which hour of code activity? So uh, this tutorial that we, we've made um, kind of helps guide you through that. So on the left-hand side, this first column, you will see grade levels. So six to eight, nine to 10, 11 to 12. And then um, the first row here, you'll see as it goes from a lighter color to a darker uh, shade of blue, no coding experience and which activities would make sense based on uh, having no coding experience so and separated by grade level all the way up to advanced programming. So students that have, you know, more experience with more advanced languages like Java for a high school student, um, you know, depending on the grade level there, um, thinking that if they have <clears throat> experience with Java, you know, that's a little bit more complex language. So, and in high school, I would probably focus on these uh, four areas here in the bottom right. And, um, what I would do too is you can even, you know, ask your students which activity might they want to explore. Um, and you could have, you know, students doing, uh, multiple students doing different hour of code activities as well. Um, so yeah, for your recommendation, high school student with a background in Java, I would probably stick to this area here in the bottom right. So intermediate to advanced and then nine through 12. So kind of perusing through that and choosing one that would make sense there. So that's the first place I would start is determining, okay, like which, if I'm not familiar with programming or my students aren't, or, you know, whatever grade level, kind of getting a, an idea of what hour of code tutorials to choose from. This is a great reference to have. This is something that I would, um, that I would bookmark. All right, next thing I wanna do is actually take a look at our Hour of Code page. So there's uh, there are two links. There's the one that Christopher put in the chat, the codehs.com slash HOC. Um, and there's, if you actually type in codehs.com slash Hour of Code, it'll bring you the same same redirect to all of our resources there. Um, I, I think HOC is a little bit easier to remember if you're uh, you know trying to pull it up in a pinch, whatever, you don't have a bookmark, no worries. So uh, yeah, let me pull that up right now. So this link um, will bring you to all of our CodeHS Hour Code activities. And the first thing that you'll notice at the top here is you have all these different tags, whether uh, you wanna uh, filter to high school or to just middle school. Um, if you wanna look at uh, specific block coding um, for all of you elementary teachers, we do have some Hour Code activities in here as well or intermediate, advanced. And so a lot of what we were kind of looking at right here uh, is essentially kind of what's being filtered uh, to there on our, our code, just main curriculum page here. Okay, so now we, we, have, we have our resources of, okay, where are all the hour of code tutorials housed. Um, maybe we've bookmarked that. We have our guide on choosing the right tutorial. Now let's talk about, okay, I've picked the hour of code that I probably want to run with my students. Now, how do I actually implement that? So um, let's talk about that. So a um, few different steps here. First thing that you're going to want to do if you don't have a CodeHS account is that you would want to create that account. Um, so that first step, creating CodeHS account, so codehs.com slash sign up slash teacher. Um, if you already have an account, you're already ahead of the game. Um, selecting the hour code that you would like to use with your students. And then checking out the lesson plan attached to that hour code choice. So if you decide, you know, hour of code programming with Carla Dog, or really any other hour of code activity, what you're going to see is that the on each of these tutorials, there is a button that will take you right to the lesson plan, which I'm going to dive into in more detail in just a moment. And 
yeah, once we've looked at the lesson plan, we want to make sure that we're, you know, reading through that entire document, looking at any, um, you know, discussion questions, common problems and issues that students may have or questions that they may have. Are there any handouts that I need to print out in advance? Uh, any sort of things like that, reviewing um, solutions, printing out those answer keys if we want to have those as a reference. That's always a great idea as well. And then in terms of your students accessing these hour of codes, there's a couple of different ways of how you can do this. Um, if you decide uh, students will have access, um, will access the hour code activity by logging into Code HS. Um, sorry. We first want to decide if students will have access to the hour code activity by either logging in or logging out. So students could access these hour codes um, with an account or without an account. So if a student already has a Code HS account created, and maybe you've done a few different Code HS uh, courses or lessons or activities before, um, students can log into their account. Um, you can create an hour of code section and then enroll your students in there. Or you could just assign the hour of code activity from that main hour of code uh, page here and that, where that middle button is, that assign button. And you can assign this right into one of your actual courses as well. If students are not logging into CodeHS, that's okay. If they don't have an account, students can still complete the hour of code activity without having an account. Um, and I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. There's these direct links that will bring students right to those hour of code assignments. So that's probably, if you're looking, if you only have, you know, 45 to 60 minute uh, time frame, and you don't want to have to worry about students creating an account on the day of and just kind of navigating that process, um, this is the easiest way to do it. So they can, they don't have to log in in order to do it. The one caveat there is that because they are not logged in, their progress is not going to be saved. So once students exit out of the their web browser, that activity is no longer saved. None of their progress is there. So my recommendation, if you want students to be able to save their work, if you want them to explore more computer science curriculum, then maybe having them in advance create an account um, that could be something that you do maybe as a warm up or a closure, a brain break, you know, sometime before maybe Thanksgiving break or right after. And so that students already have their accounts, they're good to go. So that way, when you implement an hour of code activity, um, you know, students are able to log in quickly and they're able to access the hour code and save their work. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through just a couple of things and dive more deeper into the lesson plans here. So, um, you know, going back to step one, we're on the hour of code main page. I am trying to select the correct hour code for my students. My students, let's say, for example, are middle school students and have never programmed before. So maybe I want to select, you know, a, a beginner activity here. And so, uh, there's a lot of different options for this. One of my favorites is the graphics with Tracy the turtle. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do before I even assign this out is I want to go through, read the lesson plan, understand what this lesson is all about. So I'm going to go ahead and click the lesson plan here. So uh, right away, this first page will be uh, similar amongst um, the hour of codes is going to give you some general information about these hour of code activities. So uh, like I was mentioning before, if students are accessing this hour of code without logging into code HS accounts, the program they write during each exercise will not save uh, when they continue on to the a new exercise. So um, they should be reminded to copy their code from each exercise to use in the following exercise, or they will not have access to that once they continue on. So that is the, the one caveat. It's easier to uh, get started right away, but you know, reminding our students that their progress is not saving as they go from 
each activity to the next activity. Um, I think in the long run, it makes a little bit more sense if you want students to have to save their work and to continue learning about computer science to have them create their free accounts there. Um, yeah, and then so before the hour code, so making sure student computers have up-to-date browsers, um, you know, reading through the teacher notes, which we're going to go through on this one, downloading any of those notes or exercise solutions, having those on a clipboard. That's something I would do if the uh, content is new for me. I would want to have those solutions as a reference. So if and when students have questions, I'm not having to run back to my computer and check the solution. I have it right there on a clipboard and I can help guide students right away. And then also checking for any supplemental uh, handouts. So this particular activity, the Tracy the Turtle one, has an additional worksheet here. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, and so these correspond to some of the exercises in this hour of code. So as a teacher, if this, if this hour of code is new to me, I am going to spend some time going through the hour of code activity myself before I present it to my students. And that includes, you know, going through these, these handouts and determining, you know, do I have time to do this? Does this make sense for uh, my learners? And is this something I want to uh, additionally implement during the hour of code? So during the hour of code, so really this, this middle section here, um, so there is a redirect for each hour of code activity. And so you'll see that under the, the during the hour of code, um, where students can get directed right to the hour of code activity. So this is wonderful if students are not logged in. You could, you know, simply put this up on your projector or on your, your boards. And so that students can just type in codehs.com slash HOC underscore. And this one is turtle for turtle graphics. And this will bring up the hour of code, um, this, this particular hour of code. So each of the uh, tutorials will have their own redirect links there. And then depending on, you know, your learners and classroom time, really just giving students the opportunity to complete the hour of code at their own pace. Um, if you want them to work with a buddy and maybe do some pair programming or work in smaller groups, I think that's fine as well. Um, but really just kind of giving them that opportunity to work through that activity um, at their own pace. And so let's let's take a look at this uh, um, Trace of the Turtle graphics hour of code. So you can see that this one will start off with a video as most of the hour codes will start off with. And maybe what you can do, something I might recommend, if you wanna help like scaffold um, students uh, progress and just kind of navigating and understanding the platform, especially if this is their first time, is maybe watching the video together as a entire class and then allowing students to work at their own pace. So you have the ability to watch the video here. Um, the video is uh, housed on our CodeHS servers and then also on the on a, a YouTube server as well. So depending on you know school access in terms of YouTube, uh, if YouTube is blocked, you do have that access. So just ensuring that students click the CodeHS version and they'll be able to see that video. You also, uh, this is something I would point out, um, if you either want to deliver this hour code yourself or you want students to reference these slides from the video, you do have that ability up here. There's a toggle between the video and the slides. So if I click on the slides, it'll pull those up and students have access to this too. So they could use this and go back to the uh, video slides as a reference as they're going through this particular hour code or any of the hour code activities. And then what students will do is they'll just simply once they you know finish the video or you finish it together, just bottom right clicking that continue button. And um, what you'll notice in this uh, next exercise, which you can see the sequence of order here, these are all the um, activities in this hour code. And so students would just follow this sequentially. So the next thing that we see is an example. So this is an example from this particular hour of code. 
Uh, so after watching the video, students would be familiar with this. So they're they're provided with that uh, sample code. They can change the code. They can run the code all they want and get start get familiar with um, some new Python trace of the turtle commands. A couple of things I will also point out too, um, in terms of if this is your first time working in our IDE. So it's important to kind of point out a few different things here. Uh, so one thing I'll point out here on the left is we do have a settings gear. And so this is where students can, and you as well, can change you know, font size if you need, if you are presenting to your students, uh, but the font size was too small, you can always increase the font size. Um, I would recommend just for this hour code, uh, to leave the editor as it is, but you do have the option to choose between the ACE editor and the Monaco editor. I would simply stick with the, oops, the ACE editor, and you already see I changed the theme there, which is students uh, tend to like doing that. Um, but I like the, the ACE editor, and if you're familiar with our platform um, before or not, the ACE editor uh, allows you to collaborate with your students um, in various capacities in different curriculums uh, in, in your in your courses. So um, yeah, I would just leave that by default. And then in terms of the console size, things like that, you have the ability to adjust those settings as well. The main area here, this is your, your IDE, and this is where students would are going to be doing most of uh, putting or inputting in most of their work. In the top here, you have three different buttons. The next one is going to just save your progress as is and just move students to the next item in this lesson. Uh, the fork button, what that does is it will make a copy of the code already there and it will put it into uh, your sandbox. And that's if you are logged in. And then the save button just saves your work. Over here on the right, so we have a few different options. So our output window, we can run our work, we can uh, clear that. There's also a docs tab, and I think this is a super important one to, to point out. Um, so any of the turtle graphic commands, so this is essentially like an online textbook for students um, based on turtle graphics. So sometimes I will recommend students to, you know, open that up in a new tab so students can you know have you know a little bit larger view of the turtle commands and they can you know explore a little bit more if they're uh, more curious maybe they finish early you know encouraging students to try to implement some new code and see what that does into your programs all right a couple other things uh, i want to point out with the lesson plans here um, you know, we also implement or uh, input different discussion questions. So, you know, if time allows at the end of the period, facilitate a discussion around our code. So some suggested questions that you can ask students, you know, specifically if this is maybe their first time programming, you know, before today, uh, what did you think about programming or coding? Um, what was your favorite part of this hour of code? Um, just kind of giving you some ideas to help uh, start some discussions in your classes. We have a an area here for just hour of code tips. Uh, so that students get stuck or have questions, it's okay if you don't have the answer. Uh, my first my first year teaching computer science, um, you know, it was it was a lot of programming was was very new to me, uh, and I made that you know apparent to students that hey, you know, we're learning. Uh, I'm learning this as you're going as well. And, um, you know, if I don't have the answer, we'll figure it out together. So kind of just like promoting that in your class and just being okay with not always having, being the center of knowledge there. Um, you'll be surprised with how many students um, may have that answer as well and, and can help out too. The second page really gets into more of the details for the specific hour of code tutorial. So the second page, uh, this is your teacher guide. So this is where you'll start to see things like your objective, the link to that particular hour of code is there as well, any discussion questions. And then my favorites is all of these solutions. 
So this, again, if this is something new to you, programming or these hour of code activities, you know, this is something I would print these out. And that's what I was talking about having on my clipboard. So if I go back to this hour of code, the items that have the uh, pencil icons down here, these are these, these are the exercises that students uh, will be completing. And so those ones are what are referenced here for the solution. So anything with the pencil icon, that is an exercise activity type. And you'll see for each of the solutions, it'll give us a description, the motivation that goes along with it, and then the solution code referenced in there as well. So anytime there's a pencil icon, you'll see that. Another thing I'll point out is for each of those exercises, what you'll see are any kind of common questions that students may have uh, for their first time experiencing that exercise or that programming language. So these are also a great reference for you to look at ahead of time um, to help maybe um, spearhead any foreseen questions that students may have or concerns. And so kind of for you to understand what the questions may be and how to answer those questions. I'll pause. I'll pause again for a minute, uh, Christopher. Any any questions or things that uh, should address? Uh, no, we had one uh, person ask if we had any sort of competition framework built into our platform, um, and uh, unfortunately, we don't. Uh, but I will uh, absolutely pass on uh, that recommendation to our development team. Um, but otherwise, uh, that is it. Awesome, thank you. Okay, a couple more things, um, and then I think we may end up uh, wrapping up early here. So just a couple considerations with implementing these hour codes and just from reminders for your students. So each of these hour codes will have either one or multiple videos. And so it's, it's highly recommended that if students are working at their own pace, that you, um, Remind students to bring in headphones, or if you are able to get uh, a class set of headphones somehow, some way, whether you're visiting a computer lab, something like that, but ensuring that students have you know, access to a computer and then also a set of headphones. Some of our hour codes will require a little bit more um, additional uh, support beforehand. So for example, we have an hour of code on React Native mobile apps. And so there is an app that students would need to download in order to interact um, successfully with the hour of code. So making sure that we're just, you know, reading through the lesson plans essentially, and making sure that if there are any additional handouts or um, pieces of software that need to be downloaded that, we are making sure that that's something that students would be able to do um, and that we could implement those successfully. We also have a, a nice little template of um, some slides that you can incorporate um, as a little bit of an intro here. And so Christopher put those into the chat. Um, and so you have you know access to these Google slides where you can make a copy of them and then adjust as you see fit. But there's a few things, you know, you know, why learn how to code, um, some good discussion questions in here, what can coding be used for, uh, you know, where can we see programming, uh, kind of getting into careers and discussions and things like that. Um, so feel free to peruse, you know, these slides, use all of them, use a couple of them, modify them, you know, do whatever you want to do with these slides. Um, to incorporate them into your into your hour of code activities. And again, I know I've mentioned this before, but highly recommend, um, as you do with every lesson, you know, making sure that you're going through the actual tutorial before yourself, especially if it's very new to you or that, you know, the if you've done an hour of codes before, but maybe you haven't used code HS before, um, you know, highly recommend that you go through it yourself, maybe taking some notes, making sure that you understand what you're presenting to your students. And that way, if you have questions uh, or you get stuck, you 
probably know where your students would get stuck or if they have questions themselves. Um, again, reviewing those lesson plans, any of the teacher guides, any of the handouts, uh, discussion questions, um, you know, there's a lot of recommendations in those lesson plans. You don't have to use every single item. You don't have to ask every single discussion question or print out every handout. Um, you know, you're the expert in your classroom. You know your students. So to decide what's best for your students, what's going to engage them the most, where are they going to have the most fun, and what is going to excite them most about computer science. Okay, a couple of last items here. So to, uh, some just like tips and tricks with running Hour of Codes. So allowing students to work at their own pace, super important, especially, you know, this is meant to be more of a fun, engaging activity to get students excited about computer science. Give yourself at least 45 minutes to complete each of these tutorials. More time, especially if we have, um, you know, younger learners or learners that maybe aren't uh, often on a computer um, and they don't often use that in your class and that's not part of, part of your classroom management flow. So just making sure that we give, our, give ourselves at least 45, I would say at least maybe 60 minutes as well. Asking problem solving questions, encouraging students to collaborate with their peers. So if, if and when they get stuck, you know, um, working with their peers, kind of, uh, instead of just asking you the center of knowledge to be able to answer those questions, um, you know, have them work together, ask questions and persevere through problem solving with their peers rather than just asking the teacher for support. Taking moments to, you know, pause for full class, either clarifications, if you're noticing that multiple students are getting stuck or just having um, maybe issues navigating to the correct area, you know, it's okay to pause and making sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, and then also for those discussions. So pulling out some of the discussion questions that you think are most appropriate um, and, you know, allowing students that opportunity to think and respond and reflect. One, one last thing I'll share too is what I like to do when I ran my hour of codes is allowing, you know, about five minutes at the end of class where uh, having students leave up their final results of their hour of code activity and doing a gallery walk with students. I always love doing this, giving my students a couple of sticky notes and, you know, having them provide a, a couple bits of positive feedback to uh, various students uh, our code creations. And that was always a fun way to kind of wrap up the day. Students get back to the desk. They have all these wonderful sticky notes about their hour of code activity. All right. So that is everything with hour of code activities. Um, but what about beyond this day? If this is only a one day um, thing in your school or in your classroom, where can we go from here? So what are some other ways to engage students? Um, and we have a few different uh, resources in here. Um, we have, a you know, if, if you want to do multiple hour of code um, activities throughout the school year, you know, it's not just limited to this, this week, but we have a lot of different um, options to go through here. So, um, and these are all linked at the bottom. Let me find the... I'll just do this. And Christopher is putting them into the chat as well. So thank you, Christopher. So yes, uh, all of those resources. So choosing the right tutorial, um, our Coding the Wild blog is a great kind of career reference where um, we have interviewed a, um, a lot of uh, professionals in the computer science industry and learn about, you know, what their backgrounds are, what are they currently doing, and where did they, uh, how did they, how did they get to that point? Um, and so there's some wonderful stories in there if students are interested in learning more about uh, how to get engaged in a career in computer science. So I would definitely take a look at that resource. A lot of good stuff in there. 
Um, one other thing I will mention that's not on here too is our project guide. So if you have a CodeHS account and your students do as well, um, we have a whole area in our um, in our site of various projects. So if once you have uh, an account here, under our curriculum area, there's a project catalog. And these can kind of act as like an hour of code where there are, um, we have a lot of different resources in here. Um, and these can be anywhere from one hour to three hours. They can be from easy, medium, or hard, middle school, high school. Um, we also have a lot of different, different tags, whether it's holiday themed, auto graded, APCSA, Carol, um, we've just added over 30 different AI um, projects as well. And so these are could be fun little ways of engaging your students further beyond these hour of code activities. All right, lastly, just getting support. Um, you know, once you create your um, CodeHS accounts, on that left-hand side that I was just talking about, we have a whole support area here. And if I scroll down on my side navigation, I have the support area where I can reference different knowledge base articles. So short little articles that explain further tools or curriculum um, within our site. And then the other one that I really like is our live support. So in the bottom right here, if I open this, I can talk with our support team Monday through Friday business hours you'll reach somebody um, from our team. They are fantastic. So if you have questions from anything of, you know, how do I set up my students' accounts to which hour of code activity did TJ recommend? I need some assistance with that. Can somebody share with me a document? They'll be able to point you in the right direction. All right, so starting to wrap up here, a couple other things um, in addition to our hour of code. So. Um, we have a wonderful cohort of certified educators on CodeHS. So we encourage you to explore that um, and join our CodeHS certified educator group. Um, we also offer micro credentials for teachers and for students to test your programming knowledge from things of Java to Python and cybersecurity. So um, definitely explore those. Uh, we have a very active educator Facebook group. Um, so if you're not a part of that, uh, I encourage you to join, share, and learn more about CodeHS and what other teachers are doing on the site. And then um, also our social media platform. Uh, you know, we're on X, uh, Instagram, TikTok, and we have a, a, a wonderful road trip going on right now. So you can see where the CodeHS pink fan is, I believe. Uh, we are currently in uh, Pennsylvania right now. So um, yeah, so take, an, uh, take a follow with that. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you have any feedback about this webinar and how we can improve these and make them even better, this is something that Christopher and I like to review after and make sure that we are always improving our practices. So thank you again for joining us today. Um, if you're watching this back, Thank you so much for taking a look at this Hour of Code webinar. Uh, excited to get started with Computer Science Education Week coming up in right after Thanksgiving. And yeah, um, thank you so much for joining. If you want to learn more about CodeHS and bring this to your school, um, you know, please take a look at this link, codehs.com slash learn more. We're happy to point you in the direction and talk with somebody from uh, CodeHS to help you know, roll out code HS in your classroom, in your school, or your district. Yes, and the certificate of completion. Um, yes, Christopher will share that one as well. So if you want to uh, receive a certificate of completion, you will need to make sure that you are logged in. If you, uh, you need to make sure that you have a code HS account in order for that to, to work. So uh, thank you. I will hang out for another minute or so. Christopher, any any lingering questions that um, need to be addressed? Uh, no, if you clicked on uh, the survey link like, immediately when it was put on, 
um, you won't find this uh, workshop. Uh, it's been updated, so refresh it, and you'll find how to run uh, an hour of code uh, on the uh, drop down for which workshop you attended. Thank you for the feedback, Stacey. We'll take a look at that and make sure any links that are not click clickable are fixed there. So thank you. Uh, Stacy, if you're logged into CodeHS and you click the attendance link, it should just say, thank you for attending. And then you'll get a, uh, a certificate emailed to you uh, in a day or two.